Welcome to my film review of Captain Marvel. So this is the latest in the Marvel uh, era of movies. It's the first lead role by a female character in the Marvel series. And if you're a Marvel fan, you don't need to listen to this review. You know you're going to go and see it. You know you're going to like it. All Marvel movies are totally worth seeing at the cinema. And this is no exception. So let's uh, actually, there was one thing that I just wanted to mention while I'm thinking, because at the very beginning of this movie, they had a slightly different intro sequence, which was really, really nice. And what it was, was it was a tribute to Stan Lee, who's obviously recently died, and he's died basically since the last Marvel movie was released, and uh, he sadly passed away, which is incredibly sad, because this guy has given us just some amazing characters and so much enjoyment and um, I really sincerely hope to goodness that the high standards that he set can be continued now that he's sadly no longer with us but I thought it was very nice that at the beginning of this movie they paid a small little tribute to Stan Lee so that was really nice um, so let's get into the review Captain Marvel now I am quite new to the Marvel franchise, I've got to be honest, uh, because of Spider-Man, it, it kind of ruined my love for uh, comic book hero movies, Sp you know, the old Spider-Mans from the noughties, for me they were all just a bit pants, a bit meh, so I was never really that into it, but then Guardians of the Galaxy came along and changed my life, I got addicted to Guardians of the Galaxy, and as a result I got addicted to Marvel, and then DC brought a few decent ones out, and I've got addicted to those as well. So I'm now a huge, huge fanboy of Marvel and DC. Any movie that comes out by them now, I'm hugely excited to see. So Guardians of the Galaxy and Thor, uh, Ragnarok, were kind of... It was around 2006, 2007 when I first started getting into my Marvel movies. So I've just been recently going through the back catalogue and getting caught up, and I've just been loving every minute of it. And this this really was no exception, except I would say about this movie, it maybe wasn't quite the high standard that I was expecting. If I was to compare this to, for instance, Wonder Woman, the DC equivalent. Now, when I went to see Wonder Woman, I went to see it just because I love going to see movies, and I honestly expected it to be garbage. Uh, I mean, that might sound like a horrendous thing to say, but I wasn't a huge fanboy of these kind of movies at the time and I went into Wonder Woman thinking this is probably going to be a bit rubbish and you know what it was amazing this was another one of the movies that really got me addicted to these kind of films it was so so good I loved every minute of Wonder Woman and you know what I've, I haven't seen it again since I'm gonna to have to look to, to hire that on DVD or something and get that watched again because it was a brilliant 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 movie loved it from start to finish and I think I was probably expecting the same kind of standard from, from Captain Marvel. And now, while I wasn't disappointed, I equally wasn't blown away. So I'm not going to discourage anybody from going and seeing this at the cinema, because you totally want to. You cannot not see a Marvel movie at the cinema. They spend hundreds of millions of pounds on these movies, and the only way to experience it properly is to experience it at the cinema. So don't for a second think about cheaping out and not going to the cinema to see this. You absolutely have to. Um, but that being said, it wasn't amazing. It was just good. Now that might sound like a criticism, but it's not. It was a good movie. I really enjoyed it. It just wasn't, you know, it wasn't Guardians of the Galaxy. It wasn't Thor Ragnarok. It wasn't the Avengers Infinity Wars. You know, it was good. It was probably on par for me with Captain Marvel. Uh, sorry, Captain America. Not a huge fan of the Captain America ones. Of all of the Marvels, those are my least favourite. And this was probably on par. Now, the reason for me saying all this is because... I think I was expecting your typical Marvel movie that's packed with CGI, spectacular effects, and just, you know, you're absorbed into this world of just mind-blowing special effects that are so good they just look completely real. And while the special effects were still spectacularly good, they weren't overpowering. What was, over, what was more overpowering about this movie was the storyline. 
and I enjoyed the storyline. I enjoyed the storyline very much, but it wasn't as jam-packed with action sequences as what some of the other Marvel movies are. Now, obviously, as the film progressed, um, more and more action started to happen, which you might expect, and it was brilliant, and it was absolutely fantastic. The, the end of the film just made me love it even more. It really was brilliant at the end. Just an absolute cracker of a movie, this. But early on, it was maybe a little bit slow um, and, a little, and, a, and a lot more storyline than it was action, action, action. But that was fine. And the reason it was fine is because the storyline is good. The storyline is really enjoyable. It's got Samuel L. Jackson in. And who doesn't love Samuel L. Jackson, right? So the storyline was great. And for all you Marvel fans out there, it ties and links in very nicely with the Marvel story, uh, the Marvel world, the Marvel universe, you know? So if, like me, you have been... I mean, what I've actually done recently is uh, I googled... Oh, my light's gone out. I googled um, what the sequence order was of the Marvel movies. So, it tells you how to watch the movies in chronological order, in the order in which, you know, chronologically, they were supposed to have happened, rather than in terms of the order that they were released. So, I've been going through the Marvel movies recently and doing that, so that you kind of, you, 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 you're reliving the story of the, of the franchise in in chronological order and I've got a lot out of it I've loved it I've really got a kick out of doing that and this movie is set in the 90s and <clears throat> firstly anybody born early enough so that you grew up in the 90s or you were around in the 90s I think you're going to get a few kicks out of this movie because who doesn't love a bit of nostalgia right so you've got like um, I'm not going to say anything about it but um, for instance the music um, you know, obviously every every movie has a soundtrack. Guardians of the Galaxy, absolutely awesome. Well, this is another one. You know, I'm not going to say it's anywhere near as good a soundtrack as Guardians of the Galaxy, but it has a toe-tapping, um, memorabilia feel to the soundtrack. And there's some other little snippets of fantastic, beautiful memorabilia thrown in there that reminds you of what it was like to be growing up in the 90s. So I loved it for that. I absolutely loved that. That was brilliant. But the whole storyline, you know, you can see it crossing in, crossing over into the other Marvel movies and how they all just sync up and link link together just beautifully in one big story. That's It's like Tolkien-esque, you know, just genius. All of the stories match together and make sense and it's just a brilliant huge universe of stories uh, that all come together beautifully. Um, so you're going to get a big kick out of it for that, and that's you know a lot of a lot of this movie was story, and a little bit of it was linking up with the others. So really, really enjoyed that. So basically, you know, you're going to come away having enjoyed this movie, and no question, you'll be looking forward to seeing Captain Marvel again in future episodes. So yeah, I'm not going to say anything about the future episodes because you can find this all out for yourself when you go and watch the movie, but. For sure, this is a great addition, a, an excellent character that's been added to the Marvel world. And um, yeah, a great addition that I'm looking forward to seeing again. So let's, um, let's go through the key points then, shall we, on this movie. Now firstly, the score out of 10. Now, it's, it should be an 8 all day long. Um, an 8's a brilliant score. I'm tempted to give it a 7.9 just because of the fact that it wasn't as blistering with special effects as what some of them were. So just to put an 8 or a 7.9 into perspective, I would have probably given Guardians of the Galaxy 2 nigh on a 10, and I would have probably given Guardians of the Galaxy 1 probably a 9. Um, you know, So giving this an 8, it still makes it a brilliant movie. I would probably give the Captain America movie movies probably in the region of seven and a half to eight you know don't mind them but they're not amazing but they are bloody good if that makes sense so this is getting a good solid 7.98 if you want to stretch me 
okay, out of 10. Is it worth going to the cinema? Well, I think I've answered that. If you, if you don't see this at the cinema, you're missing out because it's spectacular cinema effects. You know, you know these guys spend hundreds of millions making these movies and you can tell the CGI is flawless in these movies. It's absolutely brilliant. So it's definitely worth paying to see at the cinema. It's also worth paying £10 to see. So if you go max price and you have to pay £10 to see this, I mean, don't get me wrong, I would try and go on a Wednesday or a Tuesday, get your meerkat movies and get it buy one, get one free. Um, but if you can't, it's worth paying a tenner for. No problem at all. If you can only go at the weekend, pay £10, no problem. Definitely worth it. Um, and where you want to sit, I would suggest it's better to sit further forward than too far back because the closer you are to the screen, the more you will become immersed in the special effects and the CGI. But obviously you don't want to sit too close that you're having to look left, look right all the time. Um, so you want to be close, would be my recommendation. So um, is it a popcorn muncher? Well, early doors it is. It's definitely, definitely noisy enough in the opening kind of 20 minutes or so um, to get the popcorn munched. But be aware, there are elements of the movie as we get in towards the middle that get a little bit quiet, a little bit more silent sections. So that's where you're going to have to you know, pause the popcorn munching. But there is plenty of noise in this movie to be able to eat popcorn without annoying your fellow cinema goers. So it's definitely a popcorn muncher. And is there anything at the end? Well, let's see. It's a Marvel movie, isn't it? But... Tell your friends, because nearly the entire audience left as soon as this movie ended. Nearly the entire audience left. What on earth? I don't get it. If you, if you love a Marvel movie enough to pay to go and see it at the cinema, surely you'll at least see the first clip. If not, I mean, don't get me wrong, not everybody might wait until the very, very end to see the absolute last one, but at least hang around to see the first bonus clip, because that sets up the next movie that's the most important clip that brings the linkage the bridge between the movie you're currently watching and the next movie that marvel are about to release it's a bridge it's a bridge sequence it's a really really important clip and the crazy thing is you only have to wait two minutes to get it so this movie is advertised as being two hours and four minutes and in reality the movie ends after one hour and 50 minutes so you were expecting to sit in the, in the cinema for at least two hours. So if after an hour and 50 minutes, why are you so desperate to get up and leave? That's what I don't get. Like I say, probably 60, 70, 75% of the, of, the, of the audience just scarpered the second the movie ended. And the initial end sequence is very spectacular to watch it's not just the black credits rolling down the screen it's you know um some visual some great visuals going on so it's actually quite entertaining to sit there and watch the screen because of the visuals but also there was a banging tune being played remember we're in the era of the 90s and there was an absolutely awesome tune played right at the end as well so you get to sit in the cinema for two extra minutes Right. Once the movie ends, sit there. It's two minutes. I timed it to let you guys know. All you have to do is wait two minutes, enjoy the song, enjoy the visuals, and watch the important bridge sequence. Because it was a good one. Um, definitely worth hanging around two minutes for to watch. Uh, very enjoyable. You get to um, you know you get to see the Marvel characters, um, which is all always brilliant. And it gets you excited for the next movie. So that took two minutes. So that's a no-brainer. Please tell your friends, don't get up and leave as soon as a Marvel movie ends. And then finally, the sequence at the end, that took another ten minutes. So you have to be patient to get to the sequence at the end. And there was only me and two other group like parents of people that had the stamina and the, and the love and the passion for Marvel movies to stay till the very end. And we were, we were rewarded with a sequence that it's not going to change your life if you miss it, but I, I say it's worth hanging around for. It, it put a smile on my face. Um, it was a little bit humorous. So definitely worth hanging around for. And um, to be honest, I would also consider it to be quite an important part of the, of the story. You know, the whole story where they all link up and sync in together and they all have parody with each other. This very last sequence 
had something to do with the entire Marvel um, story. So you'd be crazy not to stay. So you know the movie's on for two hours and five minutes. Sit, wait till the end, watch this last sequence. Yes, it's ten minutes, but once you've seen the first sequence, after two minutes, you can sit, you can text, you can do your Facebook updates or whatever it is you need to do. You can keep yourself entertained for eight minutes on your phone and then hang around and watch the last sequence. It's definitely worth waiting around for. So, I think that pretty much covers it. This is definitely a movie you want to go and see. Um, brilliant addition to the Marvel Universe. And I'm very much looking forward to seeing the next Avengers movie, which came, comes out on the 25th of April. So, my recommendation is get revising, get boned up, get watching all of the old Avenger movies again and all of the movies that you might have forgotten that tell the storyline leading up to this because the next big movie by Marvel comes out on the 25th of April. I literally cannot wait to see it. I know it's going to be brilliant. Will it be as good as the Infinity Stones? Because that was awesome. It could be. Who knows? So we've got that to look forward to. Enjoying this Marvel um, story uh, sequence of movies. They, they are absolutely brilliant. And please get yourself to the cinema. Go and see Captain Marvel. And we will see you on the next review. Captain uh, the Avengers coming soon. But this was great. Do you know? I just need to say it again. This was a great movie. The, the story element of this where it linked stuff up and oh, it was so good. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. So please go and see it. Wasn't quite as funny as some of the Marvels, Guardians of the Galaxy for instance, but it didn't have to be. Just a brilliant story, great movie, amazing special effects, and Captain Marvel is an awesome character, and I welcome her to the franchise. So thanks for listening. We'll see you on the next review. Take care.